Hey, what's up you guys? Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music. I'm very happy to bring you this classic John Mayer song. I uh, worked pretty hard on it, so I hope it helps you guys. Also, I appreciate that extra support when you go to martymusic.com, sign the newsletter, get some free courses. Got a bunch of cool free courses over there. First comment will take you there. Enough of that. Let's get to it. All right, this uses a lot of Hendrix-isms and uh, understanding the cage system will help a lot. Uh, it starts with a C-sharp minor chord, which is barred across the ninth fret, but we're gonna play this part of it first. We're gonna use our ring finger and slide up to the 11th fret on the A string, and then grab the ninth fret on the G string. Then we're gonna grab the bass with our thumb on the ninth of the E. Now on the recording, it's a big muted hit on the strings. Uh, live, sometimes I'm hearing him do the chord. And so all that would be, I'm just barring that down on that ninth fret of the G, B, and high E, the thumbs muting over, kind of thing, okay? Next, there's a lot of little embellishments in this part, but let's just start with the notes. 11th fret D, 9th fret G, then 9th fret D, 8th fret G. These are thirds of the E major scale. Then we're gonna cover the 11 of the A and D and slide that down to the nine. So it looks like this. Put that together with the first part. Now what I'm doing is I'm using a pick on these little stabs here. So I can get a big hit. But then when I go to the next part, I'm using my finger. So I'm using my thumb and middle finger. And it's mainly because when you get to that part, you kind of, you know, need the thumb uh, on both hands to get the bass note there. So from the top, Now, some of the nuances, you could slide a half step into it. The other thing is you could slide it back and instead of switching fingers, use your index and ring for both so you can slide it. You could even, you know, slide with pinky here. So there's gonna be a lot of little magic that you can uh, dig into with that. Now we're gonna grab the A note. This is all very Hendrix, uh, Bold as Love. Bold as Love is a good one. You know, it uses a lot of the same stuff. So it's an A chord, but it's this Hendrix kind of thing. So what I'm doing is with my right thumb, I'm hitting the fifth fret on the low E, and that's my left thumb. And so I'm playing this little piece. Really, it's just like it's coming from an A major chord, but we're embellishing by kind of adding up to the note of the chord from this one. So anyway, to get that voicing, it's gonna be middle finger on the fifth fret of the B, index on the fourth of the G, and then you're gonna hammer the ring finger up to the sixth fret of the G but you're also hitting that bass note. So it's like, I'm using my ring in middle and my thumb here like this. So look what's going on. Thumbs there, middle finger on my right hand's on the G, ring finger's grabbing that B, and I'm hammering up to the sixth fret there. See that? So watch from the top. These little, I'm using the pick. 
but then I switch the fingers. Slow. So then I'm taking my ring finger off and I'm doing that same pinch on the right hand. Sorry. Next, index finger just scoots up to the uh, fourth fret of the D and the thumb is going to hit the open E so that left thumb comes off. It's really all about the open E hammering up from four to six on the D. That index is covering over. And if your middle finger is still on that fifth fret B, then that's good. So that move there looks like this. Next, where the ring finger is already on the D string right there, you're going to now slide from that spot up to the 11th fret and then grab that 9th fret G. And now you're in that same move, but instead of it, the original one's on the A string, the second one is on the D string because it's coming up, well not because, but it, it's, it's a nice transition because it's already on the D string. See that? So D string now. Same thing, but now this one's different. And I'll give you an easier option on that last chord, but it's, a, it's like an A major 9 chord, so it's kind of this fancy, colorful chord. He does use a major 9 chord in a lot of songs. So what we're doing is we've got that thumb on the A. Now I'm covering the D and G on the 4th fret. But the ring finger is up on the 6th of the D. And so I'm hitting the E string, D, and G. Then ring finger comes off. And it's an E major chord, but he loves to make, make it challenging. <laughs> Not really, but this is the C shape, the C voicing from the cage system. If you look, my index finger looks like a capo. My middle ring and pinky are forming that C chord shape. So it's like C, up a whole step, D, up to there. It becomes an E major chord. So very similar. Same chord, different voicing. So from the top of that. Second one. So look at that again. Next, just think of the basic bar chords even. C sharp minor, A major to E. Now if you take the parts that you've already learned, you get stuff like this.
So that's all where the, when the vocals come in, well, and also the line. All that, he's not doing. He's doing that, but he's not doing this. He's not doing that, he's just kind of more mellowing it out. A E. So now it's all just those nice little C sharp minor pentatonic stuff. Any of that. And then that classic which we already did from the intro. Now the line I'm gonna do the double stop style that I've seen him do live a lot. So that's the first move. We're gonna use our index and ring finger for all of it. Sometimes they're gonna be a whole step apart on the B and high E, and then sometimes they're gonna be a half step apart. So we're gonna start with uh, 12 on the high E and 14 on the B. Then we move that up a whole step. And as we're going to pluck and then immediately slide. And so what's going to happen is ring finger is going up a half step. Index is going up a whole step. So it looks like this. It's hard for chubby fingers. But that's it. Then we're going to hit that one again, then the whole step one, then same thing, the whole step down. So put those together. Twelve and eleven. Then back up, twelve and fourteen, so then back down to the same one. And then finally, and that's a nine on the B, seven on the high E. Second one starts the same way. and makes it all the way down to 12 and 11. But instead of going back up, it goes here, which is nine and seven, then that down a whole step. And then finally, the one together, five and four. Now the B section, or the we're going down part, it's a B major chord. C sharp minor to A. And so if you're look, uh, using these more Hendrix kind of voicings, you're thumbing it with this F looking shape. And with the A, same thing, thumb. Then we go back to B. Up to C sharp minor, and then F sharp minor. And then the line, slow dancing in a burning room, goes back up to C sharp minor. And then that A to E. And you could go A to E. Now, honestly, you know, if you're a beginner, you got. And even the, the whole song could be like that. You know, obviously not exciting. But you can do that. Or if you're like a singer song or a solo artist, you're playing a cover, you could kind of. You know, you could start that way. And then to sing and play it, you could go to your regular uh, bar chords right there. So another thing about that. 
sharp A is this part. So that's going on through that whole section, and it's a really cool little part. It's coming from this little piece of the B major chord. So you're covering that seventh fret of the G, B, and high E, middle fingers on the eighth fret of the G, and then we're just adding, and I'm gonna use my uh, thumb and middle finger, and we're just adding the ninth fret of the G and B to it. Like that. So there's a bridge section, and it's F sharp minor up to C sharp minor, you know, second fret, ninth fret. Then B to F sharp minor. Starts over again, F sharp minor to C sharp minor, and then B, but now down to A. And then just right into slow dancing. So once again, F sharp minor to C sharp minor, B, F sharp minor, F sharp minor, C sharp minor, B, A, and then just the slow dancing C sharp. All the soloing is the C sharp minor pentatonic or the E major pentatonic, it's the same thing, so you can rip roar over that. Have some fun. All right, there it was. Thank you again, you guys, for the support. I really appreciate you uh, subscribing, liking the video, leaving comments, going to the website, martymusic.com, signing the newsletter, and uh, you know, just showing support for me by showing support for Marty Music. Thank you again, hope to see you real soon. <laughs>